Hey everybody, uh, Dan here from Postfly. Um, just excuse the noise a little bit, we've got a few customers in the shop right now. Um, but this week we are going to be tying the Rainbow Warrior, which is a phenomenal uh, searching nymph, uh, pretty much year round. Uh, Pete and I, who will be joining us in a little bit, both use it excessively for uh, especially like early stocking fish. Um, but as well as wilds and all that sort of stuff, it's just a really deadly, deadly check nymph. Um, let me see if I can get the camera to, uh, didn't mean to do that, everybody. See if I can get it to, uh, to show up. But really all it is, is a little bit of rainbow dubbing, a nice little, uh, just some mylar thread, a thread and some pheasant tail. So, uh, let's get tying. All right, so first step, like usual, is get that thread onto your hook. And then we're going to wrap it down just about to, I like to do it to about the barb of the hook on these type of, of hooks. So you can see, stopping right about there. Uh, first step is to take your pheasant tail. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take uh, we're gonna take, see all the fibers there? We're gonna take these bottom, I don't know, three or four, whatever, pick your poison. I'm gonna strip those off the, and I like to keep these long. I don't like to trim them until I, after I tie them in. So I'm just going to, and again, just kind of proportions vary. It's not crazy imperative that it's a super duper exact length. Um, I'm gonna grab another uh, another couple fibers I dropped a few so let's get these you want to make sure all the tips are lined up when you're when you're tying it in all right so we're gonna take move that hook up there that eye up there I'm gonna adjust my fly real quick get it up all right Justin let me pull you a little closer there you guys are gonna have to be okay with seeing my close up of my really bad beard. See. Sorry, Justin, I'm trying to get that. Is that better? Justin? You got any flies? I have a couple All right. All right. We'll start from here. Okay. So now we'll do the, uh, thanks for speaking up, Justin. Glad I wanted to, wanted to make sure you guys got everything. So I'm gonna tie, take, I'm gonna hold the tips in my left hand and just get one trapping wrap, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna crank down a little bit and get that tighter. Hey, Steven. Thanks for making your voice heard. All right, so we're gonna get that going. And then we're gonna trim this off here. All right. And it doesn't need to be a super crazy tail or anything like that. Like I said, it's a very simple pattern. Um, all right, so next step is we're gonna take our flash of boo. You're gonna take one strand. You don't need, you don't need to do multiples. All right, getting this out for you. All right, so. We've got our one strand of flash boo. Now you might just want to trim this in half just for convenience sake. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Again, just using the kind of handy dandy, double it over itself. The black of my shirt, hard to see. All right, let's try, let's try the green. The better everybody. All right, so we're going to take our mylar and thank you for the feedback. Please keep it coming. I wanna make sure that these are as good as possible for everybody watching. So if you want it to move up or anything like that, please let me know. And I'm happy to facilitate as much as possible. So we're gonna tie in our flash of boot. All right, Bill. So you're just gonna wrap down, put your bead head on 
and then wrap it all the way back to the to about the hook point or the barb of the hook and then you're just going to tie in your pheasant tail so like three or four strands of pheasant tail maybe like quarter of an inch long or less doesn't need to be crazy long uh and for the record for those of you who are just might be just joining us uh this video will be published on our facebook page at the once we're done with the broadcast all right so once you have that mylar in we'll let bill here catch up how's everybody doing tonight everybody have a good week looking forward to the weekend Sorry, I couldn't make the Friday right meeting next week. What's up, Todd? We'll see you next week. We made up for it the other day. Um, and just going off like I've spoken about in past, in past posts and past videos, I counter. I'm going to wrap this around. So I like to counter wrap. And you're going to want to keep this. You want it about halfway over the previous wrap. So you're over wrapping, uh, overlapping the previous wrap. Um, and we're going to stop right about there. We're just going to, you know, make sure that's secure. That's it. And uh, don't worry, Bill, I'll be doing another ver another uh, tie just to make sure everybody's caught up and all that sort of stuff. So now we've got our mylar wrapped around our thread and the tail out. Oh, Tommy, you are correct. This is just a perennial favorite for us here. All right, and the last and final step is just creating a little dubbing noodle with this rainbow dub we have that is in your pack. Uh, I like to use this stuff for everything from rainbow warriors to scuds to little highlights on other flies. So we're just going to take just a really thin, sparse patch of dubbing. doesn't really matter. Carl... I think it is um, because it is my way of staying attached to fly fishing, even if I can only fish once a week. Uh, I really love the, the process. Um, I like feeling connected to fishing even in the winter or the off season when I'm not able to fish as much. Um, and it's also just really, really cool to catch a fish on a fly you tied. It's kind of like the whole, the whole process brought together. And it's just this really cool way of staying connected with nature, um, as well as like learning. Uh, I think my favorite part about fly fishing is the continual education that you go through. Um, I don't ever want to get to the day where I feel like I know everything about fly fishing. I think that would just get kind of boring. I don't know about you guys. So we're just going to take this dubbing noodle we've made here. Um, doesn't need to be very long or very, very thick. And you're just going to wrap that around, right around near making sure to keep that dubbing noodle pretty tight. And then once you have that down and it's just the thread left over, I like to just kind of push that little dubbing ball back a little bit, make sure all the fibers are behind my thread. <laughs> Thanks, Colton. And then all we're gonna do is just wrap around and you're just gonna create a little hot spot. And all a hot spot is, is just, you wanna keep wrapping until that thread starts to show up around the collar. So you can kind of, I can't really see because all your comments, but you can see right, right next to the, to the bead head, you can see that little patch of red. All that really does is just add another little pop of color for the trout to look at. Um, and now you got your rainbow warrior. Uh, it's a super hunter. Doesn't take a lot of practice. Um, I mean, if you view it as practice, I just like getting creative a little bit behind the vise and messing around and playing around with different patterns, different styles, different, um, I don't know, it's just a way for me to be creative. Uh, and you learn along the way, uh, that's the best part. And the best, another great part is trout don't eat ugly uh, and fish in general don't eat ugly. They go, or they eat ugly, I'm sorry, put that the other way. Uh, John, yes, this is a great pattern to tie on a jigged hook. Uh, so all we're gonna do real quick, it's just that's it. Another good one is look up band line. Um it's a group it's a uh yeah, right here is mass that travels. We're just gonna do a couple if I get this right. There we go. Really, really good video. Uh 
There you go. Pull that down. Trim your head. There you have it. The Rainbow Warrior. That's it. We're gonna do one more, same pattern real quick for everybody who's just joining us or may have missed the initial start. <laughs> Looking at you, Bill. All right, we're gonna lock that down. I like on style, hooks like this, I like to give it a little bit of a downward slope on the outside so my bead head doesn't wanna try and run back up the hook. Uh, so all we're gonna do now is same way we usually start our flies. Just wrap, 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 get that thread secure. And then we're going to wrap all the way back again till just about the barb of the hook. Hey, Bill. Here, Bill, you can start tying. Now we're, we're starting a new one. Same pattern, same way, so you can tie along with us. So I'm going to take another, after we've got that wrap, I'm going to take my pheasant tail. Grab about, I got four fibers in that one. Peel that off the feather, put the feather to the side. And again, I said it, it doesn't need to be very long. It could be about a quarter of an inch, even smaller of a tail. Doesn't, they don't really seem to care much. So I'm gonna put that there. Trapping wrap. One, two, three, four. There we go. So you've got that great little tail in there. It's nice and secure. We're gonna trim that. Now we've got our tail. And all I'm gonna do after trimming that is just kind of tie down these loose ends just like we did last week uh, with the gurgler. And now we get to tie in uh, the second half of the flash of boo we trimmed up. Hopefully the audio is gonna get a little bit better. Our, uh, you know, our lovely customers just, just left. So we'll have a little bit more privacy here. So again, tie in this, the flash of boo, one trapping wrap, and then a couple of wraps to cinch it down, make sure it stays there. What's going on, Greg? Everybody, yesterday was Greg's birthday. So if you could do me a big favor, just say happy birthday, Greg. Uh, it would really embarrass him and that would make me really happy. All right, so now we're gonna do, just like we did before, we're gonna take our flashaboo and we're doing overlapping wraps. So get the one started real close to the, to the pheasant tail and then just kind of overlap about halfway uh, across the breadth of your flashaboo. Oh, sorry guys, Greg fired me, I'm done. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up to about here. There it is, thanks Susan. And then, I, as you saw, I just kind of wrapped my thread, looped it over the flash boo and then tied it down. Really what that does is just pulls it real tight, pulls it close in, makes it super easy. <laughs> Happy birthday, Greg. Uh, Gary, I am tying on the Postfly um, Miami Vice. If you go onto our website, it is under Fly Tying Tools, and you'll be able to shop it there. Uh, I really like this vice. It's great for beginners. Um, it does everything I need it to and nothing that I don't. Uh, and it's, it's super easy to use, very lightweight. I actually travel with mine uh, when I go and visit friends or wherever fish. Uh, Oh yeah, Todd. Uh, Gary, it's called the Miami Vice. I will uh, put the link in the comments uh, after we finish up here today, uh, and you can go ahead and shop uh, and check it out. It's a great little vice, super simple, works great. All right, so our next step, taking a little bit of dubbing again. It doesn't need to be a really big tuft or anything like that. I'm just gonna take about, see if you can see it better, like there, about that much. I'm just gonna pull that out. All right, now we're gonna start our dubbing noodle. So we're just gonna start twisting it, working it with your fingers, twisting it up, 
getting it nice and noodly. Um, if you don't have dubbing wax or whatever, uh, you can use, actually, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but you can use some of the grease off your forehead uh, to make sure you get a little bit better of a grip uh, on that dubbing and make sure it really stick. Jake, I actually caught a really nice cut bow on a Rainbow Warrior uh, on the Blackfoot River in Montana, right outside of Missoula. Um, phenomenal pattern. It's just, it's a just, it just goes to work. It's just a deadly all-around midge pattern. So again, we're just working this dubbing noodle around. And like I said, remember you can push, you can work that back behind the behind your thread as you go and then like I said we're just gonna make a quick little hot spot here right in front of the dubbing ball but before before the bead head and then you can just make sure that all these little fibers are sticking out buggier the sometimes buggier the better sometimes not just tie a couple a little different make one buggier make one less Oh yeah, Jake, that is, uh, I was fishing out there, I fell into the clear water, and then I landed a really nice cut bow uh, right on the black foot. And then all we're going to do again, just whip finish to, to be done. Two, three, pull that tight, bing, bang, boom. Look at that. Oh yeah, Jeff. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. This fly works everywhere. Everywhere. Michael, I gotta check that out. Co I've never heard of Covington, Kentucky. What's in those waters? All right, so we're gonna do a little remix pattern here. Um, this is a pretty simple one. Same materials as before. It's just tied a little bit differently. So. There is our second Rainbow Warrior. I'm gonna set that aside in my Dunflies category. Oh yeah, Jake. It's where a River Runs Through It is based, even though it was filmed on the Gallatin, I believe. Fish, must fish. All right, so same, starting it the same way as the Rainbow Warrior. So we're gonna wrap down our thread, pull our thread all the way back again, right to the barb of the hook. Stop that right there. Gonna trim this here. And this one is like a, I don't know if you've ever fished a waltz worm or like a, a, it's a little deri derivative of the um, hair's ear pattern. So we're just going to take a couple more little, like three or four, uh, pheasant tail fibers here. I'm just kind of working them to make sure they separate for when I tie them in here. All right. So again, doesn't need to be a super long tail, maybe like eighth of an inch or less, just kind of enough to let the trout know that, Hey, this is a bug that you should eat. All right, so we've got that tied in. Hey, Cody. Um, we do a lot of, uh, we're actually located in Massachusetts. Uh, we are out in Newburyport up on the North Shore, but I have been out to fish the deer field a couple of times, and uh, I fish a lot of South southwestern Vermont and northwestern uh, Massachusetts for trout. So we've got our tail tied in there. We've got our thread. So what we're going to do now is take another strip of cut one and a half of the flashaboo. So let you guys get to that. And we're just going to take this. And all you're going to do... <laughs> What's up, Ian? All you're gonna do is just tie this in out the back. Get it down taut up against the pheasant tails. We're just gonna leave that. 
So let it hang there for a little bit. Uh, you can see it just sitting there. I like to push mine over the back of my vise so it stays out of my way. Uh, you can do what you want with it. And then we're going to, now instead of wrapping it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another dubbing noodle here. We're gonna noodle that all, all up on this, all up on this thread. So where's everybody hailing from this evening? I wanna hear a, uh, give me a little roll call. Where are y'all watching from? All right, we're gonna wrap this forward, making sure to keep that noodle pretty tight along the shank. I'm gonna add a little bit of dubbing here. I want this to be a little bit of a, a little more buggy. Hey, a little Louisiana action. Oregon. Oh, Buffalo. Bill, you getting ready for steel? A little Cali in there too. Johnson City, Tennessee. Travis, I just, uh, I'm going down to the South Holston soon. We'll have to meet up and fish. Michigan. All right, get some scam fam up in here. Binghamton, North Wisconsin. Michigan. All right, well, everybody welcome. And so I, I don't, I want my noodle to stop, so I'm just gonna pull this dubbing off of here and set that aside for, for next, next little tub. Ooh, Travis, I will. So all we're gonna do is after that noodle, you're just gonna wanna put a couple wraps right about here, and you just wanna leave a little gap between the end of your dubbing noodle here and the bead head there. Um, and that's where we'll put in our collar. But for right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this mylar and we're gonna do one. And these don't overlap. So you wanna leave a little bit of bugginess between them. We're gonna wrap it one more time. I'm gonna twist around my mylar or flashaboo. And then I'm just gonna tighten that down right there. And then I'm going to trim this. And this one, uh, the name of this fly is a tungsten surveyor. Uh, typically, you want it, all it is is the Rainbow Warrior dubbing with a flashaboo wrap. Um, and then all we're gonna do is after you do that for the, the body, all you gotta do is the collar again, and it's the same, same dubbing. What we're gonna do is, and you want the you want the collar to be a little bit bulkier, a little bulkier than the uh, the body. And you might say, "Hey Dan, this looks like a bunch of dubbing tied onto a hook." You are not wrong, but for whatever reason, this little rainbow dubbing stuff drives trout wild. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they want to taste the rainbow. Maybe they've been watching a lot of Skittles commercials. Who knows? But for whatever reason, this little tinsel wrapped Rainbow Warrior dubbing machine is a fish catching monster. Uh, sorry boys, let me just, I need to get my, get this up and running. And we will be all set to go. All right, so we're gonna do one more of these real quick and I'll, I'll really, it's just a bunch of dubbing and a little bit of flash, but this fly goes to work. Uh, it, it just looks fishy. I, it doesn't look like a bug, uh, really, besides more just looking like a midge. Um, but really, it just I think it just gets their attention. It looks weird. They're like, hey, what's that? I, the only way a trout actually knows how to determine what something is is to put it in their mouth. That's the only real sense of... You know, they do have their lateral line and they can feel, but that's their really only way to determine if something is 100% food is to try it. Hey, Ted, what's going on? All right, so we're gonna do one more of these. Take this out. 23 minutes, all right. We're gonna do one more of that pattern. Sorry guys, just get my flash boo ready. 
I'm going to double that over. Going. All right. I'm going to set that aside, ready to tie in after we tie in our pheasant tail. Unless I drop it, and I drop it. All right, now she's up on the table. All right, pheasant tail time. So again, you just want like three to four fibers. We're gonna pull that. Uh, Ted, we are using a, I believe it is, if it's a Tiemco, it's a 2457, but it's just a scud hook. Um, they go by many different names, numbers, calls, whatever. Um, but this one is a curved shank scud or caddis hook. Sorry, voice was getting a little dry. All right, so I just have to rethread my bobbin here. So we'll just do a little quick tip and trick. So if you break your thread and it gets all, I don't know if you guys can see that, all kind of curled up and messed up at the end, um, just trim that. You really want it to be, to make sure it threads the best, you want to have a straight section of thread. And then this is a trick doesn't look great might be a little dirty but all you do is feed it feed it through that tube and then put your mouth to it suck it like a straw but bam no more worrying about those threading tools or anything like that just power of suction and willpower all right so we're going to start our thread in here we're going to wrap it all the way all the way down the shank here until, like I said before, down to about the hook barb. Uh, hey, Greg, we're tying uh, Rainbow Warriors. So we're just gonna, again, peel some pheasant tail, get those lined up. We're gonna get that measured out to where I want it, right there. Pinch it with my left, trapping wrap, one. And once you get it in there, one, give it a couple good, hard, firm wraps. There we go. I'm gonna trim that there. All right, and again, like I say, just tighten down those loose ends there and then wrap back just to the start of the feather. Then we are going to take our flashaboo. We're gonna tie that in here real quick. The nice part is you just tie that in, get that down. Wrap back to where you started. Then we'll start our dubbing noodle. So we're gonna get that onto the thread here. So you can pretty much endlessly recycle dubbing, which is pretty awesome. Um, as long as it's not getting mixed with other colors, you can just keep reusing it once it's already been noodled once. It's very easy. So we're gonna get that in here. All right. We're gonna tie this, and then we're just gonna get, oh, that's not cooperating. There we go. Ah, all right. Sorry about that. This happens to the best of us. Hey, Bill, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, this video will be live on our Facebook page uh, as soon as we are done tying. So all of you who might be joining us right now uh, or will be, will be joining us later on, this whole video will be on our Facebook page in its entirety as well as on YouTube and on our blog. Uh, the Wade. So I do want to, before I tie in anything more, uh, I just wanted to iterate that we have a promo code for all of you people, lovely people joining us here on the interwebs. If you use code tie with postfly, all one word, all caps, I think it's tie with postfly one or tie with postfly 10. And that will be a 10% off of all of our fly tying and fly tying tools, fly tying materials, fly tying kits. That'll get you 10% off of all that jazz. 
uh, I will be posting that promo code in the comments as soon as we are done here, as well as a link to buy next week's kit, which will be the Creelix, which is a truly, truly, truly deadly, deadly streamer, whether you're throwing it for, I've caught striped bass, bluefish, albies, brown trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, smallmouth, largemouth, pike, carp. Yeah, that's 10 on that one fly. Um, it's truly ridiculous. Yeah, Bill, tune in. It's great. All right, so now I've got all those little obligations out of the way. We're just going to take our flashaboo here. There we go. We're going to pull around here. I'm going to do one wrap. Two wrap. Get it here. Just like before, taking my bobbin around that flash of boo. And then I'm gonna tie it in here and just get that down. Uh, and really all that does is just make sure that you really grab that material and you don't let it escape or pull through or anything like that. All right, and then for the last step, just gonna pull out Enough dubbing for a collar. Get that all up in there. Hey, John, what's going on? Welcome. On there, wrap, wrap. Making sure there's enough bulk at the head to overlap and to look bigger than the back end. Uh, like I said, this pattern doesn't have to look pretty. The uh, trout will eat it anyway. There we go, got a little hot spot. I'm gonna trim this, I don't know what's going on. This little mohawk here, this little, what is that guy's name, Sandlot? I can't remember. There you go. Now you have your tungsten surveyor. Very simple, very effective. Uh, you can tie these on just about any size hook. I fished, I have them in my box from about, you got a 14 and an 18 in your tying kit. Uh, I tie them anywhere between a uh, size 12 all the way down to a size 22 if your eyes can handle that. There you have it, tungsten surveyor. All right, we're going to do one or two more. I got two more hooks left. So I went through a couple doing some practice before you guys. So we're going to do eh, two more. I think two more is good. All right, so we're gonna go back to the original pattern here. So get that secured in your vise there. All right, same as usual. Take our thread, back it all the way down to the barb of that hook there. All right, I'm gonna drop that here. Trim this off. There you go. Pheasant tail. Ooh, I know our next pattern. I just had a brain explosion, guys. Our next pattern's going to be tight. All right, so I'm gonna take same thing as before. Just needs to be about like eight them and then it's just enough to kind of tell that trout that that's a tail. Trapping wrap. Make sure those points are up. One, two, three. All right, we're going to take this. Trim it. All right, then we're going to take a tie in of the flash of boo. We're going to tie that in around where we tied in that pheasant tail, making sure to not, not trap that pheasant tail in the material that I almost did there. All right, after that's secure, I'll wrap that up to about there, leave a little gap for the collar. Remember, for these ones, for this pattern, you're gonna wanna overlap so the previous wrap goes halfway, or the next wrap goes halfway over the previous. So that whole body 
is coded in this Flashaboo. Or you could snap it like me. All right. It happens to the best of us. So what looks like I'm going in rewind is me making up for my mistake. There we go. Let's start that over, everybody. All right, double it over. Boink. Going to get that ready. Again, hopefully this one doesn't snap on me. Two, three, four. Get that back. I'm gonna wrap back forward to where we were before that. All right. One. Remember to continually be overlapping. Oh my God. I keep perf, so be careful what I'm doing. The little mistake I make in there is my mylar keeps getting caught and frayed on my hook. So avoid that by not letting that happen. I'm sorry, guys. Not all of us are genius. All right, let's try that again. See if I can't not perforate this this time. So with this Mylar, the trick is kind of to do a loose wrap, and then once you get it, then really crank down on it. Because it is a synthetic, so it's gonna be a little slippery, more slippery than a natural fiber, or a natural, there's not really a natural flash outside of Peacock. But, all right. So let's see if we can get this this time. Whoop. Make sure to avoid that hook point there. Hi, Caitlin. That one's for you, Travis. So again, remember, see how I wrapped it around that flashaboo. Then I'm gonna cinch it down. Make sure that's solid. What's going on, Alex? That's solid. Now we're gonna take our rainbow scud dub. And get a little new noodle there. Get that up. Travis, I will. I head down there a couple times a year. And then we're just gonna take that dub and noodle, get that right there, and build up that little hot spot here. Hey, Mark. Mark's always here. <laughs> All right, Alex, we'll do the mop. We'll do the mop like a couple weeks. I wanna make sure that kit's actually available. And now we've got that there. Two. Three, four, all right. Then you're gonna cinch that down. Drill set, there we go. Trim that extra thread out here. Boom, there's your Rainbow Warrior. All right, so this next one we're going to do, <laughs> good to see you, Mark. Uh, this next one we're gonna do like a little pheasant tail um, cause we've got the tail, we've got the dubbing. Uh, the only thing we're really kind of lacking is a wire. So if you have like an ultra wire, um, or a more metallic thinner, thinner wire, you can also use that. And I'll explain when to start using that. But again, there's a little rainbow warrior midge getting ready to do some damage. All right. So last last fly of the evening and then I gotta let you guys go. Oh, Susan, you can use the lead. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. Um, if you wanna make the fly a little bit heavier, 
you can use the lead, just wrap uh, maybe up to about the hook point. Uh, wrap that around the shank. Here, I'll do one with lead for you guys. I'm sorry. So we're gonna take the lead here. I'll show you how to do this. That's my bad, everybody. Kind of forgot about it. So take the lead. I usually start the longer, a longer bit of it so I can make sure to, I have enough room to manipulate. And then I'm just going to push that on the hook and then just start wrapping. The nice thing is lead holds its form. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's good. And all this really does here is just add some extra weight to it if you were gonna fish it in some faster water um, or whatnot. Or if you're using a more check nymphing style where you really want them to make sure they rock it to the bottom. So let's take, when I tie in, after I put the, the wire on the, on the hook, what I'm gonna do is take my thread and I put it at the base of the wire and that's where I start tying my thread in. And that's because this way I can go, and I usually tie in diagonal across the wire, the first part, and then I'm gonna go back the other way. Doot, doot, doot. Just really making sure this wire is secure, it's smooth, it's not gonna mess with my other materials. And then we're gonna wrap back to where we started our other patterns. Right there, stop it at the hook the barb of the hook there, boink, trim that. Gonna do pheasant tail. Take that off, peel that off there. Same as before, just find that little tail length that you're happy with. Trap and wrap, three, two, one. Got our nice little tail going. The nice thing about the Rainbow Warrior is it is just such a quick and easy pattern to tie that you could whip out a dozen in half an hour. Easy once you kind of get into the rhythm. This is the rhythm of the night. Sorry, everybody. Get all excited there. So... And for those of you tuning in who may or may not have a PostFly subscription, remember you can use the co promo code BONUSFLY when you sign up for your first box and get two times the flies in your first kit. So I'm gonna start my Mylar or my Flashaboo. Right up there. Rep, 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 rep. All the way up again, still giving yourself that little bit of a break there. Uh, in front of the bead for your collar. So we're going to wrap this back. And if you're tuning in and you want to learn to tie this fly and use this video for that, uh, you can shop this kit on our website right now and pick it up. And then, like I said, this video will be posted on our Facebook page. So you can Come back whenever, whenever you get your kit and uh, learn to tie, follow along with me and the rest of our uh, lovely audience. And you'll be able to figure that out. So now, next step, dubbing again. Just getting enough for a nice little little collar here. We're gonna, oop, oop. That might be a bit much, so I'm gonna trim. I'm gonna take a little bit off that. There we go. And a little bit of dubbing goes a long, 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 long way. So don't worry if if you feel like if you feel like you're using enough, take about half that and then work with that. Some advice an old old timer gave me. All right, then we're gonna take our dubbing noodle. You can tighten your dubbing noodle too. Too, if you pull down these loose fibers down at the bottom, they'll pull the rest of it tight. And then all I'm going to do here, cinch up my bobbin a little bit, 
brushing back that dubbing as you go, you wanna make sure it's gonna flow backwards over the fly when it's in the water, not trapped up by the bead head. All right, so now we've got our little hot spot here. And now we've got our lead-lined Rainbow Warrior. Sorry about that, Susan, again, I, uh, I, <laughs> I completely forgot to do the lead wire. Uh, that's on me, guys. And you can use lead wire for literally any nymph pattern or woolly bugger that you just wanna add some weight to. Maybe it's because your local stream or local pond is real deep and you need it to get down fast. Um, or just for uh, you know getting your nymphs down with a uh, little bit of urgency. Uh, feel free to use lead and, and work within that. Hey Scott, um, this is tied on a 14 but I tie it on everything from a 12 all the way down to a 22. Excuse me. It is just a very effective pattern. For whatever reason, trout just love the way it looks. And this is a 2457 or a 2487 scud hook. All right. So what I'm going to do, since I have tied up all of the hooks that you guys could see, I'm going to break into this other kit. Um, just grab another one of your hooks. Um, one of the size 14s or the smaller one. Um, it's the same mechanics, just a little bit smaller size. I'm just getting another hook out. And I'm going to show you how to do a cool pheasant tail variation here um, before I sign off. Little rainbow warrior pheasant tail. It's pretty cool. All right, so let me. Got my hook. Getting out my beads here. How's everybody doing? Everything going all right? Sorry guys, I'm threading this hook. But bam. So you can use, I'm tying this on a, on a straight shank just because I don't have the scud ones close by. Um, but it's gonna be the exact same mechanics. Um, so just follow along, I'll explain on your hook how it would go along. So we're going to start this very similarly to all of our other stuff. Just gonna get our thread on here. And I'm gonna wrap it, you're gonna wrap it all the way back to the barb of your hook. Don't forget to pinch your barbs once you're done. It's a really helpful uh, fly tying technique to measure stuff like that, but it's also a, um, if you practice catch and release fly fishing, uh, crimping your barbs can go a long way to make sure your fish uh, survive and don't, uh, are damaged or hurt or whatever it's just a lot easier um, you might lose one or two more but you'll know you'll probably have a chance of catching those fish again um, if they weren't harmed as much all right so we're gonna take a clump of again four to five pheasant tail fibers here all right mark have a good one um, and I'm going to take this, again, you kind of just want the tail about that long, maybe like the, the, take the length of the hook point and then double that back. I'm gonna take this here. I'm gonna wrap back to where I started my tie in. All right, and here's kind of the, the, the trickier part. Um, you're going to want to Wrap your thread. And I just say trickier because you got to be delicate with these fibers. Um, so you have your your pheasant tail tied in. You've got the long length sticking out the top. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start being very gentle. No, you don't need to put a lot of pressure on these feathers. They will snap, and you have to start over. So I'm taking these pheasant tail feathers, wrapping it forward slowly being delicate with these feathers because they will snap on you and trust me, it's frustrating. So now we got our last one here. I'm gonna tie this down one wrap 
And then what I'm gonna do is come over the top and I want those, you want those feathers to be parallel to the shank going back over. And I'll, you'll see why here in a moment. So you want your fly looking like that before the next step. All right. We're just gonna take another little, we're gonna make a little dubbing ball here right at the head of the fly. All right, and this will be our last pattern for the evening, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is awesome. Could not do this without you guys here. Otherwise, it'd just be me sitting at headquarters tying flies by myself. All right, so once you've got that dubbing ball in there, now your fly looks like this. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take that pheasant tail over top of the dubbing, over top of that dubbing, and then you're gonna take your thread and get a nice little trapping wrap right behind the bead. I'm gonna get one more and then I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if y'all can see, and now it has that little black bar across the top of the dubbing there. Um, and that just looks like the, the back case of the wings starting to open up um, in the nymph life cycle. And so we're just gonna rotate that back and once you kind of got that, once you've got that down, you know, wrap it down, make another little hot spot here. Uh, trout love these, for whatever reason, they love a hot spot. And so I'm just gonna, once these kind of come up and are misbehaving, you just pull them back and then tie over them. Get your nice little hot spot going here. Bada bing, bada boom. You have yourself a simple yet deadly pheasant tail nymph. These I know work just about as universally as the Rainbow Warrior does. You can add, like you can wrap the shank with some wire to make sure that that tail stays down. You can leave it natural. You can really do whatever you want with it. Uh, this is one of those staple kind of ancient fly patterns that has been used since, uh, I mean, my great grandfather probably used it. Um, this just looks like a general mayfly, pretty much any nymph in the water system. Uh, it's a great pattern for if you're walking into some new waters, you don't know what to do. All you need is take, take a pheasant tail, rainbow warrior, do a nice little double nymph rig and, uh, go to town, those trout can't keep their mouths off it. So again, I just wanna kinda of reiterate, uh, thank you to everybody who is tuned in tonight. Um, it's so cool, this is our fourth week, it's been a month, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we're really looking forward to continuing to be able to do this moving forward. Uh, I could, we could not be doing that without you guys. So, like I said, we'll be, I will be posting the link to next week's kit in the comments here once we're done. And this video will be available on our Facebook page uh, for perpetuity, probably until I'm dead. And yeah, thanks for tuning in to Tie With Postfly episode four, The Rainbow Warrior. We'll see you guys next week.